Georgia wins the race this morning. What's up? Marge, how you doing? Good for you two. Putting all the Tommies and Vickies of the world and <laughs> beating them to the punch. Ah, uh, good to have you this morning. And thanks for giving me the day off yesterday. Much appreciated, trust me. Hey, what's up, Billy? Linda, good morning to you too. Stephanie, man, see y'all just getting so good at this. Y'all just pile in. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. It took not only a day off yesterday, it also took an extra smack of the snooze button. So I'm just I'm trying to shake the willies out. <clears throat> Dave, what's going on? And today is Belinda's birthday. Of course it is. Happy birthday, Belinda. And Dave, good morning. Good happy birthday to you too. Woo mates. That's after him. Stephen Dot, good to see you. And Stephen Dot, thank you very much yesterday for filling in for me. So uh, if y'all don't know, I asked him to pinch it just after the funerals and everything. Um, one of the things that one of the things that happens around the house, you all know how this goes in your own ways. Um, yeah, I could just tell, could just tell we needed a day. Jenny's been baking for the cookie walk and stuff, so she just needed some help getting some other stuff done. So I was like, you know what? I'm taking the day off. I'm going to wipe a couple things off my plate, which I was able to do. So just one of those days that you need to make sure things keep moving forward. And uh, so I, I tapped Stephen Dot and said, hey, would you guys, would you guys fill in for me? And uh, they were very, very gracious to do so. And so thank you so very, very much. But again, if you're just logging on, we are celebrating the uh, the roommates, uh, Dave and Belinda. Happy birthday to you both. Um, I pray that it is a wonderful day for you. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wait for tomorrow for snow. Um, but nevertheless, I hope yesterday's was enough to, uh, to get you excited. Um, and I pray that today's birthday um, is a fabulous one for you. And so let's get to work. There's 17 of you on. You know, 17 of you don't log on on a, on a Tuesday. So you guys are fantastic. So it is December the 15th. We are on page 66 in the book Common Prayer. We are also on the Common Prayer app and on commonprayer.net. And so without further ado, and with birthday celebrations rolling around in the back of our heads, I invite you to quiet your hearts as we go before our Lord in prayer. And let us pray. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And we continue praying our colleagues for the week of December 13th for the third week of Advent. God of power and mercy, as we walk as pilgrims through this barren land, fill our hearts with joy. Remove anything that hinders us from receiving Christ so that we may share his life and celebrate with great joy when he comes in glory, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And our antiphon for this morning. Shepherd us, Lord, with your faithful hand, and guide us gently into your land.
Holding this thought in mind as we pray, we read the words of Psalm 78, verses 40 to 43. How often the people disobeyed him in the wilderness and offended him in the desert. Again and again they tempted God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power in the day when he ransomed them from the enemy. How he wrought his signs in Egypt and his omens in the field of Zoan. And our antiphon again. Shepherd us, Lord, with your faithful hand, and guide us gently into your land. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, uh, we're beginning in chapter 8, verse 16, and then reading down to chapter 9, verse 1. Bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, um, who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells on Mount Zion. And when they say to you, Inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they, in, should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? To the teaching and to the testimony. If they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. They will pass through the land, greatly distressed and hungry. And when they are hungry, they will be enraged and will speak contemptuously against their king and their God and turn their faces upward. And they will look to the earth, but behold, distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish. And they will be thrust into thick darkness. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Nebu uh, Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. This is the word of the Lord. And to reduce that down just a little bit, because I know that that prophetic language, Isaiah starts to sound like some of the other prophets that are at times are more difficult to read. The point here is that when Israel goes through trial, Isaiah is saying, when you're, when you're going through these issues, why is it you turn to all these other things? And that's the, that's the necromancers and the soothsayers and, uh, and all of that. He's like, why should we, why should we inquire of, of the dead? Speaking of like necromancy and all that, why would you inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? He's like, when you go through trial, why do you turn to the things that are not your God who have promised to care for you and look after you? And so Isaiah in this language is kind of going, what, what are you, what are you doing? Um, and in that way calls us, um, in these moments of difficulty, not to turn to other things, but to remember that turning to God is the place, um, turning to God and seeking God's wisdom and God's, and God's joy and the hope that we find in him turning there is where we are called to go. And a second reading for this morning, and a voice in a very similar vein to what we've just read, it comes from the book from the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, chapter three, 
verses 1 through 12, and we'll read about John the Baptist. And John's, John has, John is going to criticize in sort of another way. He's like, he's like, we have this God who's going to send somebody who's, who's prepare the way of the Lord. We, we, we know this well. But he says, rather than looking for this person and rather than, rather than walking together, said you turn to this sort of legalism or, or ritualism or a judgmentalism. It's like, why would you turn to what I think John is going to, would ultimately say are these, are these dead things on behalf of the living? Why would you do that? That's what John's message is going to be to the people of Israel, calling them back to love to their God. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Returning to our antiphon. Shepherd us, Lord, with your faithful hand, and guide us gently into your land. Our reflection for today uh, is a new one by me, um, but it certainly is a wonderful one. We read the words of 20th century Jesuit Anthony DeMello, who said, in the land of the spirit, you cannot walk by the light of someone else's lamp. You want to borrow mine. I'd rather teach you how to make your own. In the land of the spirit, you cannot walk by the light of someone else's lamp. You want to borrow mine. I'd rather teach you how to make your own. This is such a wonderful sentiment, and I hope we hear it as empowering. That the truth is, we can not walk by our own light. That's not we walk by the light of God. But the ways that we get there, we we can. And so often, so often it seems like you know there are these masters of the faith, and we can't. We'll never measure up. And I hope over the course of the year, we've discovered through all these different reader, uh, these all these different authors and, and teachers that. You know what? Spirituality comes best to the normal people, normal people who just who just pay attention and walk day by day in the goodness of God. And so, um, it's empowering to know that we don't have to we don't have to go to a guru. We don't have to. Although it's helpful to have companions along the way. Um, in fact, it's necessary that we have companions on the way. But we can walk. We can make our own lamps so that we might walk by the light of God. And that is such an encouraging thought to me today. 
Another encouraging thought is that we have names to take off of our list, and we give thanks for that. Um, heard from Wanda Weller uh, yesterday, and she said that we can take off Diane Kuhn and Ron Garrett and Mike Knight, all of whom, um, she tells me, are either fully recovered or are well on their way to recovery. And so for that, we certainly give thanks. But uh, on, the, on the much sadder side, um, we do have one more prayer request to announce, um, that Bonnie Dutterer Inkman, um, who for some time was a member here and still has um, some family here at St. Mary's, um, was killed in a car accident. Um, I'm not quite, not immediately clear if it was yesterday or Sunday, um, but nevertheless, um, just a horrible, a horrific accident. Um, and, and, you know, um, and so we pray for the Dutterer family today as they mourn her loss. Um, and certainly we pray again for one another. Um, just again, this specter of death continues to seem to swirl around us. And so we hold uh, the Inkman family very, very close to us. And we mourn her passing and celebrate her life. And so let us go before our Lord in prayer. Lord, we would admit this morning that we want this pathway of spirituality, faith, whatever we call it. We want it to be really, really short. Show us the quickest way from A to B. Show us the quickest way to heaven. Show us the quickest way to knowledge. Give us the easy answers that will get us through day by day. And there's not a single example in the scriptures, in the history of the church, in your people right now, where the shortest way was, was ever was ever accessible or was even desirable. But Lord, the journey that we are on is indeed that. It is a journey. It is a journey down into the lowest valleys and up to the highest mountains. It is a, va it is a journey that has a detour so many times. It's a journey where we get lost and we come back again. Lord, it is indeed the adventure to beat all adventures. And so, Lord, forgive us for the times when we want to take this remarkable story that you are writing in every single person's life and want to reduce it down to a formula. And so, Lord, we would pray for all who gather in this space today that you would, in the, in the words that we read today, teach us to build our own lamps. Not to just grab the closest thing that is close to us and just use that to borrow somebody else's lamp to just get us there. Lord, help us to embrace this journey that we are on. Help us even to embrace the moment in which we find ourselves as difficult a thought as that may be. Lord, help us to walk wide-eyed, wonder in wonder and joy, and discovery this path that you have laid out for us lord we'll say thank you that we get to walk this path path in this chapter of our life with with each other and so we know we have good companions but help us to take seriously and help us to experience the joy of a life and adventure lived in the footsteps of our savior and so lord because of that we offer up prayers for those who are on our list this day and as always we say thank you for the responsibility and the privilege of praying for your children by name and lord it is it breaks our heart this morning to hear the news of bonnie dutterer inkman lord and we we mourn her passing lord as she was killed in a car accident lord we hold the dutterer family very close to us and we ask lord that they would find ways to mourn her life and to mourn her passing and to celebrate her life so lord we lift her up Lift her family up and ask that you would bless them in the days to come. Lord, we also pray for Laurie Posey, for Evelyn Schaefer, for the family of David Thornton, Betty Heath, the family of Betty Harmon, the family of Bob Seip, Mike and Dee Daly, the family of Abe Weller, for Marcia Brown, Russell Ruby, Kathy Cavey, the family of Patricia Colbay, the family of Lou Gillis, Donna Rill, the family of Mel Pittenger, Shirley Amsbacker, an unspoken request, Linda Mayo, Ruth Hess Eichler, Aunt May, 
Richard and Beatrice Hess, for Caitlin, for Jennifer Ramsey, the family of Nancy Brewer, the family of Jeff Campbell, Jim Boone, Rob Rickle, Jean Alexander, Ray Owings, the Panzer family, Mike Driscoll, Terry Shavius, Anna Owings, Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn, Jean Brothers, Joe Thornton, an unspoken request, Margie Snyder, David Miller, Jean Snyder, Sherry Armstrong, and Baby Lacey. For Carolyn Yost, an unspoken request. For Susan, Cart Denner, Karen Anderson, Amber Ash, Savannah Price, Sandy Suit, Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Dave Morschbacher, Perry Lyons, Chelsea Sire, Ann Wilson, Dawn Penny, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, and Dave Cunningham. And yes, today we celebrate Belinda and Dave's birthdays. Hear also the prayers that we hold close to our hearts. Hear also the prayers that are in our hearts that we don't even know about. Lord, just hear us as we pray. And friends, when all our words fail, we remember that our Savior has taught us to pray. And so we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Try as we might, Lord, we cannot carry the full load of another's burden. Only you can take on our burdens in a way that frees us to walk upright and confident in our future. Help us to learn to trust you even as we continue to lend a hand to others. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. <sighs> So friends, thank you again for the time off yesterday. Um, and there is much to celebrate. Uh, Bob and uh, Dave and Belinda, we celebrate you and pray that you have a wonderful birthday. Um, also today, we touched 22 accounts on here this morning, which I think breaks a record that maybe we haven't touched since very, very early March. Um, and so I don't know what brought you all out today, but we're grateful that you're here. Thank you so very, very much. Um, so whatever your day looks like today, um, whether that's hanging out in your house celebrating your birthdays perhaps, or um, if it's running out and getting water, toilet paper, milk, all that kind of stuff because we are about to get dumped on tomorrow. Um, whatever it looks like for you, I pray today is a good and productive um, and blessed day for each one of you. Until we gather tomorrow, peace and good, y'all. <laughs>